Real music, real interviews, real information. That's why we call it Real Gospel with the x Man. much I'm looking forward to this interview. I love this song and this artist that's coming up. You know what? Uh, you're in for a treat. Her name is Fatria Slack Ruffin. Send up Judah.
Real Gospel is the place where God gets the glory and artists tell their stories. I'm honored to speak with this tremendously powerful and anointed woman of God. She's an evangelist. She's an author. She's a national recording artist. She's a songwriter. She's a workshop conductor and a vocal instructor. She was also raised. Now, is it? can I say the Lou or is it just East St. Louis? <laughs> It's East St. Louis. Okay, I won't go there then. Uh, uh, <laughs> Victria Slack Ruffin, welcome to Real Gospel. Yes, I'm so happy to be on. Yeah, you know, your song, Raise Up Judah, I've ha- I have to admit, I-, I hadn't known a lot about you uh, before this, but when I heard that song, I said, who is this I, what I got I, woo I, it, 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 as we say as you've heard in preaching it arrested my attention so uh, <laughs> yeah so for the listeners who don't know a whole lot about you uh, just tell them a little bit a little bit about your history and how you first came into fall in love with God oh I, I was saved when I was 13 years old um, I uh, was raised in East St. Louis of course. And um, my mother and my sisters and brothers, we used to sing together many years ago. And um, then I, uh, I guess it's a lot in between, but I later moved to Alabama um, and married. I'm almost uh, 42 years married almost. Um, And uh, I've been doing choir ever since I was 14. I taught my first youth choir at 14 years of age, and I've loved music. I mean, music is my heart. My husband says that uh, I love music more than I love him. <laughs> that might not be true, but <laughs> but I do love music. So I've been doing it uh, just many, many years. Wow. And you have an extensive resume. I also left out the fact that you uh, are you currently Kojic or you just did a lot of work with some of the Kojics? I'm currently in the Kojic church. I don't like to call myself Kojic um, because I don't believe we're a denomination, but we we it is holiness. And I, I do believe in living holy. And um, so I am in the Kojic church and I've been working nationally with Dr. Judith McAllister as well as many others. Yes, I am familiar with Dr. McAllister. Um, believe it or not, uh, I'm Kojic as well. I'm in the Tennessee Fourth Jurisdiction, and my pastor is Bishop Jerry L. Maynard. And so, uh, okay. yes, I'm not sure if you've heard of who he is, but I'm very familiar with uh, the Church of God in Christ and its inner workings. And I, I don't know a lot. I'm not an expert, but I'm just saying I'm, I'm Kojic. So, <laughs> <there it is. laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Oh, I did neglect to say that um, when I first began doing albums, I, I did them with my daughters. Um, I have two grown daughters right now. <laughs> oh. And um, I've had, this is my, well, maybe my fifth album. Um, and one album was done with my church. Oh. But this is my fifth album. Oh. So what will, will, will we know the name of some of those songs? I'm um, not sure if you've played. That's why I call his name. Maybe. Mm. Um, I'm a that, start. That was on, on one of my other projects, and oh, I don't. I'm not sure what else you may have been playing, but uh, uh, oh, it's yes was a project that I did on the Forest Temple Church of God in Christ album. Oh, so, um, I think I'm familiar with uh, that one too. I think I'm familiar with that okay. one. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's that's some incredible body of work. And for those who don't understand, I mean, the mere fact that you are uh, an evangelist, an author, a national recording artist, songwriter, workshop, that's a lot of work. I mean, you have really, you, you do a lot of kingdom work. So can you give amen. some, a, a, amen, can you give some advice to other women in particular and, and young ladies who may feel or hear the the call of God to uh, to ministry and just don't know how to get started, where they should fit in, you know, things of that nature. The first thing I will say is is that you should have a prayer life so that you'll be able to hear 
is the voice of the Lord as to what it is you should be doing and when you should do it. Because it's important to know what you are to do, but to know the timing of when you're supposed to do a thing is is very important because you can move before time or you can move too late. You know, so I, I like to pray. I live a life of prayer. I, I will say I am an intercessor. And I believe in, in not only praying for myself, but to pray for others. And as you do things for others, God will open up the door for you to do what it is you have to do. Um, I, I do know there's a lot of hindrances out there, especially for women. But if you hear God and be obedient to what he says, You'll know your timing, and you don't have to worry about any, anybody else, what they, what they say to do, how they say to do it. As long as you know what God is saying, just listen to his voice and move in his time. Amen. You know, I, I noticed that you started off with uh, prayer life. As a matter of fact, I put down hashtag prayer life. <laughs> <'Cause> I, <that's, laughs> yes. I, I'm going to use that for something, but I really appreciate that because that blessed me as well. Because I think sometimes uh, we, we move ahead of God or we, we move on our mm -hmm. own and we don't stop to say, okay, let me pray about this and just really talk to God and seek and diligently seek him. And, you know, right. and just try to figure out what I should be doing. So is there any story that you can share in terms of how your prayer life has, has helped you really just uh, do some things that you, you know would not have been possible if not for hearing from God? Mm. Oh, I'm just telling you, doing, doing these albums, I wouldn't be wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for God, because I use my own funds. <laughs> so oh, wow. Yeah. I, it's God that he would tell me, it, he puts an unction in me. I just don't, I, it's, it's really difficult to explain to anybody else, but he'll put an unction in me as to when I should do a thing. Even this last project that I did, I never have rushed a project before. But uh, last year I started the project and then at a certain point it was as though God gave me I don't know a knower <laughs> as to this is the time you need to go on and move on this um, this is when you should do this and um, just earlier up in this year he just gave me I needed to finish this project so um, I I did everything I could to get it done he just he just when you, when you live a life of prayer, he'll just put it in you when. It's hard to explain to anybody. You just, if you're close to him, and I'm not trying to say I'm so close, <laughs> but um, I do hear his voice. And every morning, I'm, I'm in a prayer. Um, I, every day, I, I walk in and I pray. You know, sometimes I'm praying and I don't even realize I'm praying. And I do believe that's why... Um, the scripture tells us to to pray at all times, you know, because a prayer is in my heart. I'll see somebody down the street and I'll pray for them or, or whatever it may be. And as I do and be obedient to God, then he leads me and shows me how to do and, and, and when to go. And that's how he did with this last project. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. So let's talk about this project, this EP, uh, Rain Down on Me. Uh, I already mm -hmm. talked about the song um, that I just find to be just an energizing praise, worship, get up out of your seat, uh, shout, dance, run if you if you can still you know run. <laughs> um, uh, right. I mean that's the kind. That's how I feel when I listen to the song uh, "Raise Up Judah," and then your voice is just so powerful uh, in the song. How you just exalt the Lord and you usher in the presence. Um, uh -huh. uh, what else can we expect from this EP? I mean, wow. Well, the um, I actually actually I really thought that um, the the "Raise Up Judah" was the song, um, but when people purchase my project they hear rain down on me mm. and I have gotten so much um, so many compliments so many people calling me telling me how it blessed them and even in studio with the producer he said I can't get through this project 
so I just knew that it was going to be a blessing to somebody um, somewhere. And when I do my projects, I try to um, uh, do something that's going to be a blessing to someone. There is a uh, race of Judah. There is a little urban gospel on there. Uh, spoken word. I always put spoken word in my projects because people need to hear the word. And um, there, I just believe the Lord. It's a little praise and worship. It's a little worship. <laughs> so um, I believe people are going to truly be blessed by the project. Amen. Wow. Um, are there any artists on here that you're working with that um, we should, you know, take note of? Any upcoming individuals? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, just me and a few of my friends. Um, this this particular one, usually I have somebody else on it, but this one, um, as, as I said, I moved so quickly on it, I really didn't have time to bring another artist into this project. But, yeah. um, you know, it's just just me, my my daughters, and a few friends Amen. on this project. So you, you wrote it, uh, so did you write this, and who arranged the music? Oh, let me tell you, God gives me my songs in dreams. Wow. And every song on there, the Lord gave me in a dream. I usually can't, I don't write songs well unless it came to me in a dream and um, what I've learned to do is hold myself in a dream long enough to learn enough of the song I get it up immediately tape it and then go right back to sleep and write it later <laughs> so that's how God gives it to me and I know that they're a blessing because God does it wow so you sort of you you you, you wake up and and you grab, I'm sure you got a recorder on your phone, and so you just hit record, and you just start singing it? Correct. That wow. is truly right. <laughs> wow. I mean, I can sort of relate to that, because sometimes when, you know, when God will say something, I used to write it down, or keep a pen and pad by my bedside, and, and sometimes I'll, uh, I'll try and speak into the thing, into my phone, and, and come back later and, and try and interpret it. But uh, that is right. awesome. And that's great advice, I guess, to anyone listening who is, uh, you know, you have a dream and you, you tend to go back to sleep and say, mm -hmm. well, I'll just, I'll remember it later. And then I, and sometimes you just don't. And it's never the same <laughs> once you try to go back. Right. It's amazing. I never remember it. If, yeah. I, if I don't do it right then, I'll never remember it. Amen. So in our closing moments, and this has been such an awesome interview, can you tell the listeners, um, so before I do that, where, where, where do you worship at now? My husband is a pastor. Um, actually, we... Oh, we have an elect lady. 100 miles away from where we really live. <laughs> we live in Huntsville, Alabama, and he pastors in Birmingham, Alabama. And the name of the church is Forge Temple. Church of God in Christ yeah. um, in Birmingham there. there and, it is. and can I say one thing? Yes, yes, um, yes. Uh, you asked me some questions earlier. I neglected to say this. It's, it's very difficult uh, for me. I like to be real. And, and one thing I know that's very difficult for me is to work through fear. And um, I, I always ask God to help me with that part of me. Uh, I, I want to give him glory for everything that he is, that he has for me. And sometimes we can use, we can use our humility, if you, if you say, as a crutch not to move forward. And uh, we, we put ourselves in the background and, and many times I've done that. But uh, there comes a time when you have to move out on what God has placed in you because many people will suffer without you using your gift. God has something for you to do. Move on what he has said and don't procrastinate any longer. And I feel like I'm saying that for someone. When God says to move, just move. 
Amen. That's awesome. I'm speaking with the one and only uh, Vitria Slack Ruffin. Uh, she is happily married to a husband of more than 41 years, Dr. Paul B. Ruffin, who is an award winning, world renowned retired scientist, educator, and pastor of the Forge Temple Kojic Church located in Birmingham, Alabama. Elect Lady, it's been an honor and a pleasure having you on this program. How can the listeners find out more about you? How can they get your music? They can get my music on iTunes, cdbaby.com, uh, Spotify, Google Play. I also have my own website. Um, it's uh, VitriaSlackRuffin.com, and I know I'm going to have to spell that. It's V as in Victory, E-T-R-E-A-S-L-A-C-K-R-U-F-F as in Frank, I-N.com. Amen. Before I go, I've got to ask you this, and I know you probably get this all the time. Are you related to mm-hmm. David Ruffin? Are you all related to David Ruffin? <laughs> yes, my husband, uh, It was he was his cousin, but wow. my husband can't sing a lick. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That is amazing. That is amazing. Not at all. Wow. Okay. You have a blessed rest of the day, and I thank you so, so much for spending time with us on Real Gospel. Thank you for having me. You're listening to Real Gospel with the X-Men.